toasty temperatures leading to scattered storms. We'll show you how long that sticks around in just a moment. A family torn apart by tragedy. A five-year-old girl killed in a fire that her mother and sister survived. We're in Owsley County with the latest. It's decision day for two Kentucky Wildcats looking at the NBA draft. Find out what's next for Marcus Lee and Isaiah Briscoe. This is WKYT News at 4. Good afternoon. I'm Jennifer Palumbo. It's another warm afternoon, and some of you may see rain. That's not the case right now in downtown Lexington, though, where it's sunny and in the low 80s. Scattered showers and storms are popping up in other places. WKYT Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has a first look at the forecast. Chris? Yeah, and it's one of those days, Jennifer, where you can actually look at the temperatures out there and see who's been getting in on some of those scattered thunderstorms. And then you can see those of us who remain on the dry side. If you're outside of thunderstorms right now, low 80s, except 85 northeastern Kentucky. If you've had a recent shower or thunderstorm, you're down into the 70s. Look at London, 71 degrees right now with a nearby thunderstorm. Right now in Lexington, Hamburg Pavilion, we're looking toward the southern skyline. And from the station here, we can see a little shower trying to pop up into Jessamine County. 82, though, humidity's up there again, pushing close to 50%. That will continue to rise. Defender Radar Network picking up on these rounds of showers and thunderstorms, especially right now across the western part of Kentucky. Get into central and eastern parts of the region. Now you see why it's only 71 down into London. We've got rain on top of Corbin, London, up into McKee, Jackson County, and on top of the Mountain Parkway. There's that little teeny tiny shower south of the Fayette County line. Right on top of 169 here in the eastern parts of Jessamine County. We're going to watch this stuff out across western Kentucky. The future hour by hour radar says some of that will try to hold together at least deep into the evening to give us the threat for a shower or a thunderstorm. Coming up in a few minutes, I'll show you why this is a what you see is what you get kind of seven day forecast. A tragic story out of eastern Kentucky. A young girl is dead from an overnight house fire. The fire broke out around midnight at a home on Old Kentucky 11 near Boonville. State police say the mother and a three-year-old daughter managed to escape, but her five-year-old daughter was trapped inside the burning home. WKYT's Phil Pendleton is in Owsley County with the latest in our top story at four. Kentucky State Police have had quite a presence here today, even bringing in a special kind of dog to sniff through the evidence as they try to figure out exactly what happened here. The fire killed a five-year-old girl, and neighbors say they tried to save that girl. They say they heard her crying. They tried to get to her, but could not. The mother and a three-year-old were able to get out, but attempts to get to the five-year-old were not successful. Well, I was going to come back and wet a blanket to try to get in the house. Cause but by the time we got back, it was too late. The house was engulfed in flames. We didn't hear the baby anymore. Kentucky State Police have not said what caused this fire, but it is common procedure for them to bring in an arson investigator anytime there is a fatal fire. In Owsley County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. The five year old girl was taken to the state medical examiner's office in Frankfurt for an autopsy. A somber anniversary. Three years ago today, Bardstown police officer Jason Ellis was murdered in the line of duty and his killer remains on the loose. Ellis was ambushed while removing debris from the Bluegrass Parkway. The Bardstown City Council has proclaimed this Officer Jason Ellis Day. They're asking people to leave their porch lights on tonight and display blue lights in remembrance of Ellis. We'll take you to Bardstown on WKYT News at 5.30. Lexington police want to find two men who robbed a bank. The robbery happened around 10 this morning at the Community Trust Bank on Pasadena Drive. Police say two young men wearing hoodies and armed with a handgun entered the bank and demanded money from the tellers. After getting cash, police say the robbers ran to a nearby parking lot where they got into a dark colored passenger car and left. Our reporters are working on a number of other stories for WKYT starting at 4.30. Amber Philpott joins us from the newsroom with a look at some of the news in progress. Good afternoon, Amber. Good afternoon to you, Jennifer. A nine-hour standoff in a Madison County neighborhood came to a peaceful ending this morning. Berea police say 51-year-old Jean Charlton barricaded himself in a home on East Haytide Drive with a woman and two children. Negotiators talked him out and then tased him before placing him under arrest. Neighbors say they received text messages asking for help just before midnight. They tell us there had recently been signs of trouble at that home.
I knew that he said he was going to murder her, he was going to murder the family. He went to her job and told her boss and some other people that he was going to kill everybody that helped her and kill her and the kids for leaving him. Charlton was taken to the police department for questioning. He'll be charged with kidnapping. We'll have an update on WKYT News at 4.30. Fayette County School Superintendent Manny Calk is promising major changes for the district. It's in response to problems found in five reviews conducted by independent auditors. Changes include restructuring central office, addressing the achievement gap, and hiring more teachers for special education, ESL, and the gifted talented program. In all, Calk laid out 100 recommendations and says everyone involved in the district needs to adopt them. I want to be clear this is not a menu option. You can't look through these 100 strategies and say, I like this one, but I may not be so inclined to support the other. There's no cherry picking. You have to be all in. Our students deserve that. Calk will present his plan to the public at 6 tonight at Bryan Station High School. We'll have more details on that plan ahead for you on WKYT News at 5. That's a look at just some of the news in progress. Jennifer, back to you. Thank you, Amber. It's decision day for two UK players. Marcus Lee and Isaiah Briscoe have made up their minds about the NBA draft and whether they'll stay at Kentucky. Rob Bromley is here with their decisions. Rob? Well, Jennifer, both Isaiah Briscoe and Marcus Lee pulling out of the NBA draft. Briscoe is coming back to UK, but Lee is not. He has decided to transfer. Word on Briscoe broke a little before noon today when he put out a Twitter message saying, BBN, I'm back. Briscoe worked out for NBA teams. According to Evan Daniels of Scout, Briscoe has complete trust in John Calipari and that it was a final talk with UK assistant Kenny Payne that helped him make up his mind. Now, shortly after Briscoe's decision came, Marcus Lee announced that he would remove his name from the draft, but he plans to transfer to another school. In a statement, John Calipari said Lee had decided to transfer out west to be closer to his family. He has a year of eligibility remaining. Calipari said, we talked it through together and discussed the team next season, which he said had no bearing on his decision. I also told him he was a semester away from graduating. With that said, he was still adamant that after the combine experience, a year off and regrouping would be the best thing. Calipari said he always supports his player's decision, and that's what he is doing with Marcus Lee. Jennifer? Thank you, Rob. As for Isaiah Briscoe, he said in his words, the NBA is my ultimate goal, so I'm returning to build on last year. There's no better place to grow as a player or to win a championship, and I want to do both. Three players from this year's UK team remain in the NBA draft, Jamal Murray, Scala Bissier, and Tyler Eulis. The draft is June 23rd in New York. Now to a story making headlines across the nation at four. The head of the TSA is on the hot seat in Washington. A congressional committee grilled him over his plans to get passengers through airport security faster. Some travelers fear the long waits could get worse as we head into summer. Craig Boswell has the latest from Reagan National Airport. Frustrated passengers fed up with long airport security lines landed the head of the TSA in front of the House Homeland Security Committee. Asking passengers to arrive three hours before a domestic departure is unacceptable. Peter Neffinger laid out his plan to get lines moving faster, including additional employee training, investing in new technology, and a new incident command center. One of my uh, fundamental priorities is to, is to dramatically expand the pre-check population and dramatically expand the capability to enroll people in pre-check. Several lawmakers questioned how the former top security operations official received a $90,000 bonus given scenes like this in Chicago. I, I can't justify the level of bonuses that, have, that were provided in the past. I can tell you I stopped that. The U.S. Travel Association says long wait times could force Americans to skip travel during the busy summer season, an estimated $4 billion drain on the economy. The whole flying thing is bad. You know, skies are not friendly anymore. Earlier this month, Congress approved $34 million for the TSA to hire nearly 800 additional screeners as well as overtime pay. The TSA says those workers should be on the job by June 15th. Craig Boswell, CBS News, Reagan National Airport. Delta announced today that it will spend nearly $5 million to beef up staff at 32 airports nationwide to assist the TSA. You'll soon be able to watch Disney films on Netflix. We'll tell you how the deal is a first for a major studio in WKYT Money Watch. 
And for the first time in more than 100 years, more young adults are living with their parents than partners. A look at the numbers next on WKYT News at 4. Keep up with the latest news on WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. Netflix says it will soon hold exclusive U.S. rights for new films from Disney. That tops today's WKYT Money Watch. The deal starts in September and includes films from Disney subsidiaries Marvel, Lucasfilm, and Pixar. This marks the first time a major studio has cut out a cable service in favor of direct online streaming for post-release pay distribution. Toyota is investing in Uber. The Japanese automaker will let Uber drivers lease Toyota cars with money they make from rides. Toyota has not yet said how much money it will invest. Earlier this year, General Motors invested $500 million in Uber rival Lyft. A new survey finds many millennials appear to be in no hurry to move out of the home where they grew up. According to census data compiled by the Pew Research Center, nearly one-third of people ages 18 to 34 live with their parents. They blame soaring rents and heavy student loan debt. It's the first time that living at home has outpaced living with a spouse for this age group since the record-keeping started in 1880. Lexington Opera House. I'm Deanne Stevens out and about with the Broadway Live announcement today. The multi talented Deanne Stevens. Hey, we are dealing with some showers and some thunderstorms lighting up our Defender Radar Network. We'll track those right after the break. Stay here. Now, your hour by hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Hope you're having a good one out there. Nice weather across the Bluegrass State if you're a fan of warm temperatures, humid conditions, and the threat for some thunderstorms. Talking temperatures before we get into the storms out there. Upper 70s to low 80s into most areas. You can actually see who is getting rain based on the temperature. 77 Somerset. Look at London. 71 degrees outside of any shower or thunderstorm action. Those readings are into the low 80s right now. Live sky cams. Let's see if we can find a wet road out there. Florence, Lexington, Louisville, Frankfort, E-Town, all dry. Eastern Kentucky, we are dry, but it's the eastern part of the state that is at least getting in on some scattered storms. Then we'll track a bigger cluster out across western Kentucky. Let's get into it now, show you what it looks like across the Daniel Boone slash Hal Rogers Parkway here in the southeastern Kentucky. A couple of widely scattered showers that are trying to grow into a thunderstorm. Got one on the Powell and Wolf County line that extends a little farther to the north. Folks into Carlisle, a couple of yards are getting in on a drop or two. Lexington area trying to get some of those clouds to spit out a couple of drops. Now look what's going on in western Kentucky, though. West of the Bowling Green area, check out this little spin showing up, a mezzo low, if you will, that has some thunderstorms out ahead of that. That's going to roll its way toward the east, but signs that by the middle and latter part of the evening, farther east it gets, it should begin to weaken just a little bit. But typically, as is the case with a situation like this, you get these little pockets of showers and thunderstorms to send out little rain-cooled boundaries, outflow boundaries that can kind of meander across the region for a day or so and spit out some additional thunderstorms. How about the day tomorrow? Anyone is fair game for a thunderstorm. Just like today, it's not going to rain everywhere. It's not going to rain hour on the hour, but it is muggy and it is warm in between those thunderstorms. It is so muggy, the muggy meter is back. That's how you know it is summertime in the bluegrass state. Over the next few days, look at that. We go, we're above the humid mark and we are into the oppressive mark as we go into especially Friday and Saturday. Let's show you how we get there with a new hour by hour forecast. For the evening, that thunderstorm complex, Western Kentucky, begins to decrease a little bit. But I mentioned that it has some rain cool boundaries that act as many cold fronts. So we may fire up another thunderstorm or two later tonight and into the day tomorrow. Outside of any storms tomorrow, those temperatures back into the mid and maybe an upper 80. By the end of the day, a little cluster of thunderstorms again tries to make a run at us before weakening somewhat. Let's go into Friday. Guess what? It's muggy, it's warm, with a threat for some scattered thunderstorms. That's a pattern that will carry us into those Friday evening plans and right on through the big 
holiday weekend. I've made zero changes basically to that forecast over the past few days. We carry that into the first couple of days of June as it stands now. Daily threat for some thunderstorms, and it is warm and it is humid. The sweat factor is going to be off the charts over the next few days. Let's get a check on traffic now with Officer Don. It looks like we're working an uninjury collision on the inner loop of Manowar at Palumbo. Just got that one reported. But other than that, it seems to be pretty clear as far as collisions go as we look at overall Lexington like, traffic flow this afternoon. Uh, drive times to Nicholasville holding 12 to 13 minutes. No major issues to Versailles. Cross the county line looking good past the castle into Versailles. Now back to you in the studio. Thank you, Officer Don. Tonight is a big night at the Lexington Opera House. We'll find out which Broadway live shows are coming for the upcoming season. I almost need a drum roll here for Deanne Stevens, <laughs> who's out and about today, joining us from the Lexington Opera House with a little more. Hi, Deanne. Hey, good afternoon, guys. We're here at the Lexington Opera House. I'm seeing what Michael Lavin's got in him here. He's preparing for the big Broadway live announcement. This is the only way I can, okay, stepping off. This is the only way I can get on stage here is if I help out what's happening, right? Big announcement tonight. Lou Ann Franklin is with us. And you never know what I'm going to ask you to do when you get here. <laughs> You're like, can you jump on that? And they need a little wait, a little wait. I appreciate you saying little on there. We all know better. Lou Ann, 7 30 tonight is show. Time. This is the most exciting time of the year for you guys. It really is. It's a lot of work coming together. We're getting ready to reveal our five new titles for Broadway Live, along with some variety live shows, and we do it in the most fun way. And I have to tell you something special. Ooh. Because we are having a huge celebration this year, it's our 40th anniversary of Broadway Live. And the Opera House turns 130 years old. Wow. So we have a season long celebration planned, and we're going to tell everyone about it tonight. This event continues to grow each and every year. You're like, Deanne, we only have a very few tickets available. So if folks want those, what do they need to do? They need to call the box office immediately. It's 233 3535. It's the only way to get tickets um, and see what's left. And we do have some seats left. There's so much work that goes into putting this show together. So many folks here preparing for that. Talk a bit about that. Your crew here, I love working with them. They are fantastic. They are. We have the best tech um, crew in the country, right here okay. in Lexington. And uh, they are always wonderful support. In addition to that, we bring local talent from all, many of our arts organizations right. to perform tonight to help us showcase what's coming uh, on the commercial tours. Okay, let's talk real quick. What was on Broadway last year here at the Lexington Opera House? Oh, you're putting me on the spot. <laughs> Just a few of them. <laughs> Just a few of them. This is called edit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are a few okay. of those shows? Well, last year we had an iconic season with Beauty and the Beast, Mamma Mia, Annie, so many wonderful shows that we, we just uh, had a, an amazing 39th year. So we're set the pavement here and get ready for 40th year. Okay, so when we return, of course, I'm going to ask her. I don't know whether she'll. <laughs> no, come on, come on. <laughs> you may just have to come on out here to the Lexington Opera House tonight. 7 30 is showtime for the Broadway Live announcement. I'm Deanne Stevens, out and about. Back to you guys. Come on. I cannot wait to hear what shows are coming. Thanks, Deanne. Relocating can be a stressful experience, especially for families. We'll take a look next in Better Living. Forget the baby shower, it's all about the gender reveal party. I'm Jamie Ucas in New York with what's behind the trend. Tonight's Powerball jackpot is $80 million, and Friday night's Mega Millions jackpot is $218 million. It's time for better living, health, education, and consumer news that impacts your life. People have thrown baby showers for years, but gender reveal parties are now seem to be happening just as often. So what is the trend all about, and why is it such a hit with millennials? Jamie Yuckus takes a look. Which one? Kelly and Jason Noto found out they were pregnant in January. Then came news, it was twins. Baffled, you know, confused. It's, uh, you know. happened. Oh, I like that. The couple already has two girls, but this time they decided to have a party where their friends and family could guess the baby's gender. Even they didn't know. We got the envelope on Wednesday, one for the, uh, the scan. They took the sealed envelope to a local party planning store that secretly filled two boxes with balloons, pink for a girl, blue for a boy. The reveal can be done with balloons, but cakes and cupcakes are also popular. The color is in the middle. 
The trend started popping up a few years ago, but family and friends seemed confused. I said, what is a reveal party? When I heard it, I said, a reveal? What the hell are you going to reveal? <laughs> We're having a party for everything. Social psychologist Susan Newman says young couples are working longer and harder than ever and are looking at new ways of celebrating life events. They also want to include everyone, unlike a traditional baby shower that's usually attended only by women. You have a chance to be surprising, and I think that's one of the biggest appeals to it. The Notos were indeed surprised. Their daughters helped with the big reveal. Two more girls. Jamie Ukas, CBS News, New York. The first gender reveal party on YouTube was posted back in 2008. Since then, couples have posted more than 100,000 of their surprise moments. The other reason for its popularity is, unlike a baby shower, guests do not bring a gift. There could be a negative impact on children whose families move a lot. In a new study at Boston University, researchers found many children's math and reading scores dropped each time their family relocated. They also found higher rates of emotional and behavioral problems in children who move frequently. Now let's head over to Chris, and some places are seeing rain right now. Yeah, a couple of spots out there, especially in the southeastern Kentucky, then across the western part of the state, getting in on at least some scattered stuff. Where it is raining, or just recently rained, look at London, 71 degrees to the north, Jackson 81, 81 Frankfurt, mostly uh, sunny skies for a while, Lexington beginning to cloud over a little bit now, with a lot of low 80s that are showing up across the entire area. Here is your Defender Radar Network, the scattered stuff in the central in eastern Kentucky, watching that complex of heavy rain and thunderstorms, though, from Bowling Green and points to the west. And Jennifer, that holds together. That'll be in the parts of central and eastern Kentucky over the next several hours. Hopefully, we can get it out of here, though, in time for the holiday weekend. Yeah, and basically, every day is going to be a repeat of the day before. Hazy, a little warm, a little humid, and threat for a storm. We're glad you're with us here on WKYT. Sam Dick and Amber Philpott are next with WKYT News at 4 30.